But thanks God, there's other uh, sorts of, of modern substrate, like for example, pumice, which is of, of volcanic origin, it's very light, and, and lava, which is very closely related to pumice. Now, now all these three and all the, the rest that I speak about will ha have as one property in common, and that is they can take up moisture and can give it back the work like a buffer, meaning uh, you, you water, uh, the water runs through, uh, but your substrate uh, swallows some water, and then it's it's not dry, it's moist, but it's not wet, okay. And then the, the plant can 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 take water out of the substrate, and, and and have enough water for a long while, much more than if you, for example, use just stones. Yes, you can use just stone for substrate, but it's not so good. Uh, this. Uh, the kinds of substrate that take up moisture and to give it back are much better. It's akadama, it's pumice, it's lava, it's baked loam. Uh, you can find baked loam for many uh, purposes. One is horticultural, so you can buy it in garden centers, but it's very expensive there. You can buy it in building uh, industry for insulation. It's used. It's used for for doing a, a tennis courts and all that stuff. So, yeah, speaking about tennis courts, in the old days they used to have this reddish stuff on tennis courts coming from, from the, the bricks, okay? So, so brick crush is, is a good substrate. And now it's becoming, getting very exotic. Styropore uh, with this foam is, is a good substrate. You could use anything. One man jokingly said, if you were a dentist and had a lot of, of, of teeth, you could use old teeth as substrate. Now, of course, this is a joke, but it really would work. Uh, it, uh, and it's much better than soil. So now you under start to understand what's going on here. So, so many people say, well, but what exact mixture? It does not matter. Okay, As long as your substrate is of certain size, and has all these properties and is cheap, it doesn't matter. So, so I take whatever the market bears, whatever somebody gives to me, I also recycle something. There's absolutely nothing against using it again, maybe saving it before. So I have a mixture of everything. And then people ask me, what exactly do you do? I said, I don't know, I don't care. And the plant doesn't care, I tell you. Uh, I, I can see it from my plants. Uh, they, they, it, there's really no difference. Well, there's some difference in, in, for example, carrying a big tree. I have many very big trees. Now, you want to carry these tr uh, big trees alone sometimes. You be, be, will be very happy if you plant them in pumice, because when pumice is dry, it's very light. It actually swims on water. So, now we spoke about substrate. We, uh, so, watering, now you understand, uh, is not a big deal with uh, substrate anymore, because you don't have to be as careful as your bonsai book tells you. I'm not saying that everything that's in the bonsai book about watering is stupid, but it's not up to, today, today, to today's uh, horticultural knowledge. So now, with, with the advent of modern substrates, watering has radically changed. Uh, there is, was this saying, and still is, and I hear this so often that somebody tells me very wisely, Oh yes, watering is the most important skill that you have to learn and you have to be very careful to water every tree individually and you, not too much and not too little and, uh, and, and if you give the, uh, your trees to somebody else to water over the weekend, be very careful who that is because he may overwater or underwater. That is true with all soil, but with modern substrate it's very simple. You water uh, as much as you think and then you water some more until uh, water flows out of, of the holes underneath and out, everything is dripping wet. By the way, you water all over the plant. You also make this, the, the trunk and the, fo and the foliage uh, wet. Uh, you bonsai uh, saying that you should ne never uh, water the top is just a myth. It's wrong. Uh, so it is, the contrary is true. The trees love to be watered everywhere. Okay, so what exactly do you water with? Well, ordinary tap water. We always have these questions on the internet. Oh, I live in whatever city and they have this hard water full of calcium, magnesium, and, um, and, and where do I get this rainwater or distilled water for my poor little plant? 
and say, well, um, can I ask you two questions? One, do you have a dog or a cat and do they drink that water? Do you cook with that water? If both answers are yes or the first answer is yes, then why in the world do you think that your tree will not like the water that your dog drinks? Well, I thought so because, well, well but why because? I honestly don't know, but just about everybody as a beginner thinks that this is a problem. It is no problem at all. It comes from watering your house garden, house plants and it comes from the fact that if your water contains a lot of calcium you will have this white grey uh, um, things on, on your pots, okay, and they are, they are not beautiful. Now if your tree is outside and it rains they will not appear anyway and you can always wash them away or, or take some vinegar and, and, and wipe them off. So your tree loves ordinary tap water. There's a lot of things in there which is almost feeding. You have all read uh, the contents of mineral water. Okay, the bottle of mineral water says that there's a milligram, 200 milligram calcium, magnesium, whatever, nitrate. And uh, so you think, you know that there's a lot in there. Also s micro uh, pieces of some very, very rare metal. Fine. All this the tree needs. Now, you don't need to water him with mineral water because every ordinary tap water basically is a mineral water. It's only not called that. It also has these contents. So every watering with tap water is feeding already because the tree gets a lot of things that he needs which are in ordinary water. Okay, if you water the tree with rainwater or, or, or distilled water, be very careful because there's nothing in there and then you must uh, feed an, an much more than otherwise. So, uh, you can just water uh, uh, as much as you want, you can hardly overwater. Any fool can water uh, if as long as he waters a lot. Uh, you can underwater though, uh, meaning that uh, if you are just doing what you are, have been taught to not do too much, then it may be too little and your tree will dry out. Uh, yes, these modern substrates, they do often dry out a bit faster than the old-fashioned soil. This is why I started to use some organic matters, which normally you would not want in substrate, and these are uh, peat, rough peat. You can, in some countries you don't get this, only you get only the dusty stuff which you don't want. So you get uh, uh, coconut fibers, or in America, for example, they get a crushed uh, uh, bark particles. All these are organic matters which in general have not, no business to be in, in substrate. But all these are organic matters which take a long time to decompose. Meaning peat takes 10 years before it's dust again. So coconut etc. So you can leave this in there for let's say 10 years and then only repot. So that, so that we spoke about substrate and watering and the next thing will be feeding.